successful event. Any comments, Brother Ben? Well, when you get ready. Yeah. We had about 11 uh, cars show up. We had uh, quite a few people from our church show up. We had some really good um, interaction one-on-one, -on -one, and our, our goal was to plant a seed, and we planted some seeds. So let's just see how God waters them and how they grow. Uh, I was going to put, we didn't have but 11 vehicles, and I was going to put my old 2010 Ranger in the back, but some of the guys said, don't do that because you make us look bad. All right, so here's Brother Ben. The, the weather was not good yesterday, and I know some car clubs were going to come, and they didn't show. So we would have probably had 40 or 50 cars yesterday, but we had some diehards that came out with a wind chill in the 20s and uh, displayed their cars. But I just want to say thank you to everyone that helped work to prepare. It took actually a lot of work, and it went off smoothly. We got to, uh, again, minister, witness to some people, some guys. Uh, that came. And so if you helped yesterday, just kind of wave your arm, your hand. Okay, would you give them a uh, applause? Okay. It was a lot of, of work. We had trophies and all these kind of forms and contacting and going and getting prizes to give away. And uh, it was just a lot of preparation. It actually didn't look like that much went and food and all of that. But it was a lot of uh, uh, work, and we may try to do that again next year since we kind of have a, uh, we'll just pray for better weather and maybe push it back a little bit. I don't know. I uh, wish it could have been today. You know, it's so much nicer. But I do want to tell you this, and you're going to get to this in a little bit. We, because, consequently, we didn't have a lot of people eating, we were ready to feed 200 people with hot dogs and hamburgers. So, you know what? We have a lot of food left over, and we decided to have an impromptu church hot dog and hamburger meal afterwards so uh, yeah I, I hope you, you can stay um, and uh, we'll have also food for sale if you want to take chips home or something like that but we have a lot of food and uh, just if you can make any kind of donation that'd be just fine to help us uh, to uh, kind of reimburse our expenditures but anyway uh, stay if you can and I'll turn it back over to you but all right thank, thank you, you church thank you Thank you, sir. So um, in honor of yesterday being a two-lace car show, uh, Brother Ben uh, introduced me to a couple of characters here just about eight months ago, all of us. So Sven and Ollie, they bought a new car. <laughs> they were so excited about it that when they got home, they locked the keys in it. So Sven is saying to Ollie, I thought you had the keys. And Ollie says, you were driving. The driver always takes the keys. Well, says Sven, it doesn't matter much. The question is, what are we going to do about it? Now, here's the kicker about how bright these two fellers aren't. Ollie says, I don't know, but we better come up with something fast because it looks like rain, idiot, and you left the top down. <laughs> you, we get it? Okay. You get that one? All right. You guys, you got your bulletins in front of you. You see the financial summary there, remodeling of the fellowship hall. We think it's going to... I'm sorry, is pending, and which the fund balance is about 16000 so we might be there. Um, next Sunday, Signature Sunday, we were going to do this uh, the first of this month, but we had the bad weather. In fact, we didn't have service, so dress like your favorite action figure hero next week. Let's see how many of us can do that. What? Because we're springing into action. We're springing into action. There you go. Yes. Let's just see action, how that works. Action figure. Yes. Action figure. Yes. Do what? No Superman in tights. Got it. Okay. Joel Bandy's memorial service will be Saturday, April 6th. This coming Saturday at Emmanuel Baptist Church in Shawnee at 2 p.m. Anybody that wants to go, make sure that we know we will take the van so we can get 14 people in there and probably a few other cars that we can carpool. So if you want to go to Joel's service, please make sure we know. It says we're going to leave about 1215. All right. We got that? All right, so the Living Proof, Beth Moore live concert at the Cox Convention Center, October 11th and 12th. We got a few months for that, but the early bird registration is, is uh, in about 16 days. Prices are $59. The amounts are down there. Pay attention to that. Uh, let's see, Spring Fling, do these pictures remind you of something? It's time to bring plastic eggs and individually wrapped candy to fill the Easter eggs. The hunt is on Saturday, April 20th, so that's like three weeks from now. Um... Anything else? Any other announcements that we need to do uh, before we, we close this in prayer? Anything else? 
Oh, by the way, I got asked this morning, does anybody know what room Norma is in at Jim Thorpe? Yes. All right, thank you, sir. And then B is in Concordia, which is on Britain and Council up yonder that way. Meyer and I went to go see both of them. Uh, Norma said, "Don't Gerald and, and uh, Chuck, don't sell the kitchen stuff. She's coming back. And B, B said, you guys are welcome to come visit her. She's got her room by herself. So um, she has the activities on the weekend. She doesn't do the therapy. She said she would welcome the visitation. So just go by and see her. That building is huge, and it's shaped like a letter H with another wing on it, and she's in the north end, so when you get to the building, just drive to the, drive to the west end, go way to the back. She's in the north, room 4011. So you guys, go by and see B today, too. All right, well, let's close this portion in prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for what you do for us. Father, we thank you for the conviction that you gave us to ha hold the car show. Father, the, the amount of people that showed up is less than what we had hoped for, but we know through you, we know through your, your kingdom, we know through your grace for us that it was the right, the exact number that needed to be here. Father, we planted seeds yesterday. We will be anxious to see how they grow. May we remain ministers. Father, may we remain excited to witness to other people that we meet, no matter where we are, whether we're shopping for groceries, whether we're at the lake fishing. Father, wherever we are, may we be the ambassadors to Christ that you have designed for each one of us. It is in your holy and great name, Jesus, that we play all of this morning's festivities, all of our activities, the singing that we're going to do, the message we're going to hear, the praying that we will uh, engage in. Father, may we do everything to, to, the, to the glory of you. At the end of this service, may you look down and see favor for what we did. In your holy and great name, we pray. Amen. Good morning. Great to see everyone this morning. Would you stand with me in worship? God, 
One day every knee will bow. Still the greatest treasure remains for those who gladly do now. Come, now is the time to Now is the time to give your heart. Come, just as you are, you worship. Come, just as you are, before your God. Amen. Amen. Welcome, everybody. If you are a visitor today for the very first time in the back of the chair in front of you, you're going to find a small blue card. And we would appreciate if you would take a moment to fill it out. So we have a record of your attendance. I see a visitor here. So uh, in, in a little while, we're going to meet each other because we know from John Nicholson telling us and we know from our scriptures that a, a heavy heart weighs a man down, but a kind word lifts his spirit. So we want to welcome each other shortly. Um, we have a memory verse we do here as well. It keeps us, rem it reminds us each and every day that we say it, whenever we can think about it, that God is in control. Today is going to be a good day in the great Southwest because... We will rejoice and we will be glad. For my, for my uh, two-minute warning today, I want to share something with you. Last Sunday morning, I wasn't here. I was at Walmart helping one of our, our family members take care of a vehicle problem. And while I was there, the TV in the automotive section was turned to Joel Osteen. He is the preacher of the mega church down in Houston. And he was talking about something that was, I was already trying to formulate an idea. So while I was down there, I got to watch his sermon. When I got up this morning earlier than, than church and I had a little bit of extra time on my hands, I turned on the TV and it was on that very channel and he was finishing up his sermon. And it's about what is the favor of God and how can we get it? So real briefly, the best definition of the word favor is demonstrated delight. The favor of God can be described as tangible evidence that a person has the approval of the Lord. You know, so when we favor someone, we like to hang out with them. We want to be around them. We want them to be around us. Well, God is the same way. God shows favor to the ones who delight in him, connect with him, and give him honor. We know that from Isaiah 66, verse 2. There are ones that I look on with favor, those who are humble and contrite in spirit, and who tremble at my word. Second Chronicles tells us, For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong on behalf of them whose heart is perfect which means focus on God above all else. Favor is closely related to grace, but not the same. Those, those of us that receive Jesus when we're saved, we are saved by grace through faith. We know that from Ephesians. And without faith, it is impossible to please God, and faith without works is dead. We know that. God seeks out those who love him and love his commands so he can bless and guide and protect them. We know that from Proverbs. Three examples that really that probably are the favorite ones we all have. How about, um, how about Moses? God could easily have just transported Moses across the desert. But instead, Moses trekked across the desert and God kept him alive, showing, convincing Moses that God had favor in him. He brought him to a freshwater well and a fig tree with fruit. Um, God could easily have taken Daniel out of the lion's den and never had, a, had an issue with it, but because of his faith and because Daniel said, my God can deliver me, he showed that he gave God a reason to show favor. So the, Daniel, the lions didn't hurt Daniel when he was taken out of the pit. The people that were working with him, or I'm sorry, the guards around him were thrown in and the lions attacked him before they even hit the ground. Um, we know the same story with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. God could easily have taken them out of harm's way, but because they voiced their favor, God showed himself with them in that furnace. That may have been Jesus, it may have been an angel, it may have been God incarnated, but there was a fourth person in that furnace with them. The scriptures give us examples of asking God 
for favor, beyond grace, beyond our protection. God wants us to ask for favors. We're going to ask for favors for Jared because he's going to a mission trip to Africa. But that doesn't have to be a, a major event like that. God wants us to act favors, ask favors for when we're driving down the road. Ask favors for our bank account when it's poor. Ask favors for our health when we're having uh, issues with not being able to get around or asking favors for the doctors and things like that. God says, ask favors and let me show my, my greatness to you. The state of our world today is scary. The each and every day goes by when something else looks like it is detrimental to the Christian life, which means we as Christians, we have to ask for God's favor more and more to be able to fight what the world throws at us. Does that make sense? We good with that? All right, so I tell you what, keep that in mind. Let's take a few moments to meet and greet each other. I see Tom Knoll is in the back. Melinda's there in her chair. Farrell's up here. Meet and greet the people in their chairs that can't get up as well. Let's make everybody welcome today. Let's meet.
Amen. Sing of His grace this morning. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind, but now I see, was grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my
one day in your house, better is one day in your court, thousands elsewhere. Better is one day in your home, better is one day in your house, better is one day in your court, thousands elsewhere, thousands elsewhere. Sing that chorus again, better is one day. Better is one day in your courts. Better is one day in your house. Better is one day in your courts. Thousands elsewhere. Better is one day in your courts. Better is one day in your house. Better is one day in your courts. Thousands elsewhere. Thousands elsewhere. time better is one day better is one day in your courts better is one day in your house better is one day in your courts than thousands elsewhere better is one day in your courts better is one day in your house better is one day in your courts than thousands elsewhere thousands elsewhere you are good you are good you are good when there's nothing good in me, you are love, you are love, on this play for all to see. You are light, you are light, when the darkness closes in. You are hope, you are hope, you have covered all my sin. Sing that again. He is good this morning. Sing that truth. You are good, you are good, when there's nothing good in me. You are love, you are love, on display for all to see. You are light, you are light, when the darkness closes in. You are hope, you are hope, you have covered all my sin. Sing it. I'm running. And oh, I'm running to your arms. I'm running to your arms. The riches of your love will always be enough. Nothing compares to your embrace. Light of the world forever. Are peace you are peace you are peace when my fear is crippling you are true you are true even in my wandering you are joy you are joy you're the reason that I sing you are life you are life death has lost its sting I'm running to your arms. And oh, I'm running to your arms. I'm running to your arms. The riches of your love will always be enough. Nothing compares to your embrace. Light of the world forever. More. You are more, you are more than my words will ever say. You are Lord, you are Lord, you Christian will proclaim. You are here, you are here, in your presence I made hope. You 
are God, you are God. Of all else I'm letting go. And oh, I'm running to your arms. I'm running to your arms. The riches of your love will always be enough. Nothing compares to your embrace. Light of the world forever. My heart will sing no other name, Jesus, Jesus. My heart will sing no other name, Jesus, Jesus. My heart will sing. The name Jesus, Jesus, my heart will sing no other name. Jesus, sing it again, Jesus, my heart will sing no other name. the name Jesus Jesus and oh I'm running to your arms I'm running to your arms the riches of your love will always be enough nothing compares your embrace, light of the world, forever And oh, I'm running to your arms, I'm running to your arms, the riches of your love will always be enough nothing compared to your embrace light of the world forever father god i thank you this morning in the truth that we sang father god that you give us power through your Holy Spirit that lives in us when we call upon you as Lord and Savior. Father God, our fallen selves have nothing. Father God, you provide so much for us. Father, that song speaks of being crippled by fear, being crippled by, by things of this world, Father, that are not of you. And Father God, I just speak over that. That is not what you've called us for. Father God, that's old. That's the past tense. That's, that's what used to be. That is the old us, Father God. That has been buried into death, Father, and we have risen in a new life with you at the driver's seat. Praise God that you've given us that opportunity this morning. Father God, it is so easy in this world to find things to come in and take over our time and to take over what you've called us to do. Father God, shake our world to not let that happen. As Hal mentioned earlier, it's easy for things to creep in and for fear to creep in, fear of not having enough monetary things to make life happen, fear of what tomorrow holds, fear of health, fear of the unknown, Father God, but you are in control of all of those things. Mm -hmm. 
Father God, help us in those times when we want to revert back to the sinful man and sinful woman that we are on the inside, Father God. And help us to turn to you. Because you're where our help comes from. The maker of all things. Father God, we pray that we would continue to be invigorated with your spirit this morning. Father God, that we would reach our community as we attempted to yesterday. Father, just because the, the cold came into play, that doesn't mean that you're not working, Father God. We thank you for what you do in us. And Father God, I just pray that you would move in this church to reach people that need you oh so much, that need to run to your arms. Father God, I just pray a special blessing on Brother Ben this morning as he delivers your word, Father. And as he leads our church in such a great way. We thank you for his leadership. We thank you for his heart. We thank you for what you're doing in him. Father God, help us to run to you when we need things. Don't let us rely on our own understanding. And always we should acknowledge you, Father, and you're going to make our path straight. Your word says that. We give you praise, Father God, and we thank you for your abundant love and your amazing grace for us. In Jesus' name, amen. As we continue this time of prayer, we just want to uh, keep in mind those that are out for various different reasons, those that are in the um, recovery. I know we've got a few that we were mentioned this morning that we want to keep in our prayers. Um, but we just want to go before the Lord and, and just cast our cares upon him this morning. Uh, just pray together as a church, and that's that's what this time is for. So if you have a need and that you just would like somebody to pray with you this morning, uh, when we go to, to pray here in just a minute, if you'll raise a hand or, or stand up and just let other, somebody around you know, they'll come pray with you. Uh, otherwise, we just want to kind of pray together uh, with those around you or come up here in front if you want to pray up here in front. Uh, but let's just take a minute and let's go before the Lord, and then I'll, I'll close this with our operatory prayer. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this day. We thank you that we live in a, a place where we can gather together as a family of believers that, that you've given us that, that opportunity. Lord, I pray that you just help us to be just grateful uh, and, and just that we would just uh, treasure treasure this, this family that we have, Lord, this, this church body that we can gather together with, Lord, that you've given us a family that maybe we don't have, Lord, maybe we don't have a, a, a family to go home to, Lord, but this is a family that we can gather with and, and, and share our, our ups and our downs, our, our strengths and our weaknesses, Lord, and that, that you have always look out for us, Lord, that you are our, our comforter, our, our deliverer. Lord, I just pray that you would uh, just move in this, this service this morning, Lord, that we would hear your word, feel your spirit, that you would just speak to each of us individually in a, in a way that we need to hear, Lord. And I just pray that you just would bless Brother Ben as he shares this message, that, that he will just speak the words that you would have, that you would speak through him and, and it not be his words, but yours. 
Lord, I pray that you would just bless the, the tithes and offerings that are given today, Lord. I pray that you would just help us to, to continue to use those to, to further your kingdom, Lord, that we would be good stewards of those gifts you've given us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Levi and Ben. And that was not just a little um, guitar. It was a mandolin, right? Right. right. Uh, yeah, I don't get to hear too much mandolin playing. Um, anyway, our children are being dismissed to uh, Children's Church now. And uh, they get to hear the gospel and Bibles uh, can understand the Bible on their level. And that's good. That's good. We are going to uh, look at what we were looking at last week. It's a continuation, a night of dark water training. And eight lessons for those who serve the Lord. Or you could also say eight lessons for dealing with the storms of life. Because we all have storms. And so this morning, we're going to investigate this and get these nuggets of truth, uh, good practical applications from this text here in, in Matthew that's also found in Mark and John and apply it to our lives. Someone, I heard a joke somewhere this week. Do you know what you get when you put a vest on an alligator? An investigator. All right. All right. But, you know, we need to, all of our lives, we're going to be investigating the Scriptures, okay? And that's, that's, that's what we're going to be doing. And you always grow and you always learn. And, and every time I go to something I've read many times, preach from perhaps many times, I'm always going, ah, I didn't see that the first time that I looked at it. So it is amazing that we can go through the same scripture, the same uh, accounts from the New Testament, Old Testament, and learn new things. We're going to jump right in and read our text. Let me just give you a little background that... 
the disciples, Jesus had just fed the 5,000, and now they're traveling from the east side, the northeast side of the Sea of Galilee, over to the northwest side, which should have been about an hour. Jesus sends them away about evening, about 6 p.m., and he sends them away. He goes up to a mountain to pray, and at least nine hours later, it says in the fourth watch, it, that the, fourth, the first watch is 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. The second watch is 9 p.m. to midnight. The third watch is midnight to 3 a.m. And the last fourth watch is 3 a.m. to 6 a.m. So they were in this terrible storm. They were just basically almost treading water trying to go over to the other side. And we know from reading the other Gospels, they'd gone about three miles. So that means they were kind of in the middle of the Sea of Galilee, which is about seven miles across at its, at its widest point. And so can you imagine rowing in a storm for nine plus hours? Okay, I can't. I mean, and then Jesus comes walking to them on the water, and they were just terrified, okay? And then Peter jumps out of the boat. Let's go ahead and read the text here, and then we'll review what we went over last week and then go into our new points this morning. Immediately, Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side while he sent the multitudes away. And, while he had sent them, and when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up to the, uh, to the, on the mountain by himself to pray. Now when evening came, he was alone there. But the boat was now in the middle of the sea, tossed by the waves, for the wind was contrary. Now in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went to them walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled. Needless to say, saying, it is a ghost. And they cried out for fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, be of good cheer. It is I. Do not be afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it is you, or since it is you, command me to come to you on the water. So he said, come. And when Peter had come down out of the boat, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw that the wind was boisterous, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried out saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him and said to him, O oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? And when they got into the boat, the wind stopped. It ceased. Then those who were in the boat came and worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. And that's the very first time that we see the disciples worshiping the Lord. Join me in prayer. Father, we thank you for your word. This morning we ask that you would bless your word, Lord, and apply it to our lives. Help me to uh, preach as I should and, and help us, Lord, to understand what, what we should take away from this passage. And Lord, also help those, Lord, that are struggling. Some, some are in a storm this morning, and I pray that you would bless them and help them. And some are getting ready to go into a storm, and some maybe are just coming out of a storm. In this world, Lord, you said we will have tribulation, we will have storms. And so help us to know how to uh, apply your truth to our lives and to be faithful to you even in the midst of a storm because you're always faithful to us. And I pray this in Jesus' holy name. Amen. We are going to do a, a quick review of what we went over last week, what we went over last week. And remember that when Jesus saw the disciples, the literal Greek, when he spoke, basically he said, take courage, I am, do not be afraid. And it's significant that he said, I am, because that is who God said he was to Moses at the burning bush in, in Exodus, I think, 3. And so the first thing that we learned last week was keep rowing even when you seem to be going nowhere. And they were just really just basically treading water. For nine hours, they had been rowing and rowing and rowing. And I'm sure they were discouraged, but I'm going to give them this. They did not give up. Jesus said, go to the other side. And so what we learned last week is even in the midst of adversity, in the midst of opposition, do not quit doing what the Lord has told you to do. Be faithful to Him. Because the enemy loves to use depression and discouragement 
to stop you in your tracks and keep you from being a Jesus follower and get you uh, into disobedience and everything else. And so don't do that. Say, Lord, I I am in a storm, but I am going to continue to keep on rowing. I am going to keep on rowing even in the midst of these circumstances. And and I don't know how I got in here in this this storm, but, you know, I'm, I'm in it. And and I told you last week that there are two types of storms. There are storms of perfection. This was a storm of perfection. He was perfecting them. He was honing his disciples and making them stronger and giving them a greater understanding of who he was. And there's also storms of correction. And that's what Jonah was in when he was running from God and didn't want to go to Nineveh. God caused a storm. They threw him overboard. And and, uh, he was fish bait for a while, all right? But... You know, we, sometimes you say, Lord, I, I'm doing, you know, sometimes when we're running from God, we kind of figure that God's trying to get our attention. Uh, we, we kind of know why the storm's coming, but sometimes we have no idea. We say, Lord, I, I am doing what you told me to do, and I seem to be going nowhere, making no progress, but I'm going to keep on being obedient to you. Number two, in the dark of the night, Jesus knows your whereabouts. It was black. It was pitch black there. It was just dark. And Jesus was up on a mountain praying, but he knew exactly where they were. And he walked to them on the ocean, uh, on, the, on the Sea of Galilee. And, you know, when I think, uh, well, anyway, I'll get to this in just a bit, little bit. I've been thinking, what is it like to walk on water? I mean, I wonder, you know, I'm sure the other disciples must have asked Peter later on, what was it like? So God never forgets about you. He knows everything about you. So just know that he understands what you're going through. He knows it better than anyone else. And so just take all your cares to him. Number three, sometimes the Lord's help doesn't initially seem like the Lord's help. They were scared at first. They thought it was a ghost or a spirit. The the Greek word is phantasma. They saw a phantom. Uh, That's where we get the English word phantom coming to them. But of course it was the Lord. And so sometimes things tend to get worse before they get better. Just keep trusting the Lord the Lord, and continue to row and continue just to be obedient. And, and sometimes it's, it's, a, it's a big process. I will say this. It's interesting that they said a ghost. Um, you know, every now and then I've gotten calls from people who said, there's a ghost in my house or something. Can you come and pray for my house? I have noises, doors open on their own and this and that. Listen, it's not a person... It's, when a person dies, their spirits don't just roam around this earth. They either go to heaven or to hell. The Bible is very clear about that. The Bible is very clear. What happens is there are spirits and there are demonic spirits that will some, sometimes impersonate a deceased person. And so they will appear. I mean, I've talked to people that have seen appearances of other people But it was the occult. It was the demonic influence. And so, you know, I do believe in weird things going on, but it's demonically, uh, it it, it transpires demonically. It's not like, oh, you know, dead Uncle uh, Oscar has been roaming around this house or around this estate for 100 years now. No, he's either in heaven or in hell. The Bible says that. That happens immediately when you die. But we have to be very careful uh, when, when dealing with those spirits and make sure that you're prayed up and you can, I believe, cast them out or get rid of them, okay, if, if, if you have trouble. Some people call them poltergeists. Anyway, I just thought I'd chase that rabbit just a little while. We'll shoot that rabbit. There are weird things. Sorry, don't mean to shoot it. We'll just, we'll transport it. We'll transport that little rabbit to a safe place. All right. All right. Um, And number four, let the word of God be your source of faith and encouragement. And Jesus said, again, he said, uh, be of good cheer or really, literally, take courage. I am. Do not be afraid. And so this is this this book right here is the the word, uh, the word of the Lord to us. Precious and great and precious promises God has given to us. And we know faith comes by hearing or perceiving and perceiving and hearing by the word of God. So faith comes by standing upon and believing the promises of God. And so we have those right here. All right. Number five is this. Jump out of the boat. God makes impossibilities possible. 
I, you know, I don't really know why Peter said, if it is you, or basically maybe since it is you, let me walk on water too. I don't know. That was just Peter. He was kind of impetuous. He's like, yeah, let's give this a whirl. It's interesting. And so I've been thinking, walking on water must have been like walking on a giant waterbed. All right? But a waterbed where a bunch of people are jumping up and down because it was a storm. And so it must have been like really weird, like moving on moving, just strange. But he was moving. He was on the water. He was actually walking. The natural laws of physics were being suspended, and it was a miracle. And so... Yes, we live in the ordinary. Yes, we live in the natural world. But when we walk with God, sometimes we need to say, Lord, I'm not just going to rely on only the natural, but I'm going to look to you because you are the supernatural. And the supernatural comes from uh, that, that, that prefix is hooper, hooper in the, in the Greek, and it means above the natural. God is above the natural, so if he wants to suspend something or heal somebody miraculously, he can do it. So we can never just say, well, this is, you know, all we can do is just what the doctors can do, or all we can do is just what we can come up with ourselves. We know that with God, all things are possible. In Luke 18, 27, the Bible says, but he said, Jesus said, the things which are impossible with men are possible with God. We must never forget that. And also in John 14, 12, Jesus said this, Most assuredly I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also, and greater works than these he will do because I go to my Father. And so we are capable through the power of God, not your own power, but through the power of God, you can do those things that sometimes are miraculous or supernatural because God is working through you. In fact, there is a book that was given to me by uh, Jim Westmoreland, whose parents were missionaries in Africa for a long time. It's called Take Your Glory, Lord. Take Your Glory, Lord. This is a powerful book. The, it's about a minister there, a Baptist minister named William Dumas, and God used him to do all kinds of incredible things. In fact, I was going to read you a little portion, but I, I think I won't because time doesn't allow it. But the, the very first miracle he did, uh, there was a young, his nephew kneeled down on a large needle, and it just went embedded in his leg. And so it was just stuck in his leg, and so they said, well, he doesn't seem to be in a lot of pain now, so we'll take him to the hospital in the morning because taking someone to the hospital in Africa is a big deal, okay? And in the middle of the night, he, this, this nephew woke up crying in great pain, and his, his leg was just going in all kinds of spasms and everything. And this large needle probably was just stuck all the way in his leg, and it's probably getting infected. And William Dumas said he was looking at him, and this is the first miracle that God ever did in his, with him. And he just felt an inward compulsion saying, why are you looking at him? Go pray for him. So he began to pray for him, took back the covers and saw this young, his nephew writhing in pain, began to pray for him. And he said all of a sudden the spasm stopped and the needle goes Poof, and just shoots up in the air and falls. He's like, wow, that's incredible. God said pray. That didn't happen just naturally. That was a supernatural occurrence, and it was the power of God. So there's incredible stories, much more incredible th than that. But he said that was the beginning of how God was teaching him to rely on the supernatural power of God. And so sometimes we get a little too earthbound, okay, and maybe say, well, I don't want to pray for something too big because I might get disappointed. Listen, the results are up to God. You can ask God for anything. He'll say yes, no, or maybe, or wait, okay? Uh, you know, he, he will answer you one of those ways. But sometimes we don't, I think, ask enough and walk in that supernatural realm. So I just want to encourage you. Peter did walk upon the water for a while. That was a supernatural event. The natural laws were suspended. Number two, though, he began to sink, unfortunately. He began to sink and, and um, keep, number six, keep your eyes on Jesus and not on the winds and the waves of adversity. It says here that 
He said, he, the Lord said, come. Okay, he, he came at his will. But then he said, when he saw that the wind, the waves were boisterous, he began to get afraid and fear rather than faith prevailed in his heart. And he began to sink. He began to sink. Keep your eyes on Jesus and not on the winds and waves of adversity. I wrote here something. Uh, well, um, Psalm 105.4. Let's go with that. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his face evermore. Jesus is the author and finisher of our faith. And we should keep looking at Jesus no matter what. Looking at Jesus provides faith, courage, comfort, and peace. It does. When you look at Jesus, when you understand he is there with you in the midst of the storm, that's what it produces. When you look at the storm-tossed waves of circumstances around you, the adversity around you, it produces fear, discouragement, anxiety, despair, and you forget how great God is. You forget how great the Lord is because you're let, letting the enemy, you're letting fear and, and, and your own limitations take over. You need to look at your great and glorious Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ. Looking unto Jesus always, who is the author and finisher of your faith. Number seven. When doubts prevail and you begin to sink, cry out to the Lord. Don't hesitate. You know, I, I got to hand it to him. He cried out immediately. When he began to sink, he didn't go all the way under. He could have like gone all the way under and then come back up. He began to sink. He was wise enough to cry out immediately saying, Lord, save me. And so we need to make our, our Lord our first resort when we're in a storm, when we have trouble. We don't need to run to the doctor or to the banker, sometimes even to our spouse. We need to take our burdens to the Lord first and foremost and then the Lord will direct us. And yes, God uses all kinds of people in our lives. He uses, you know, um, uh, the medical profession. All, all kinds of people can help us. <laughs> Plumbers, electricians, all kinds of people can help. But we usually need to first take our burden to the Lord and say, Lord, give me wisdom on what to do. How can I solve this problem? Whatever it may be. And the Lord will lead you through it. Why don't we cry out to the Lord immediately? I wrote down just a few things here. One is sometimes we have a lukewarm relationship with the Lord. And that was the problem with the Laodicean church. They were lukewarm. And this is what the Lord said when you look at the, the, the message there in Revelation. I know your works to the Laodicean church, he's saying, that you are neither hot nor cold nor hot. I could wish you were cold or hot. So then because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. Now, the King James cleaned it up. They said, spew you out of my mouth. But that's what it really means. It, and so the Lord wants us to be hot for him. He wants us to be on fire for the Lord. Uh, not, to be, not to be worldly, which is another reason sometimes we don't cry out. We have a worldly mindset. And it's kind of like, well, let's not take this religious thing too far. You know, that's the worldly mindset. Let's just not get too carried away. And I remember when I was a young Christian getting all excited about the Lord and everything, people were kind of like, no, no, you need to put a governor on this, you know. You need to kind of, you know, uh, we don't need a governor. I remember when I was younger, we had a, a, a go-kart. And we found out, why can't we go faster than about 35? We found out somebody put a governor on it, all right. And I think we finally got that governor off and we could really fly, you know. Um, and so we don't need to put a governor over our devotion to the Lord. We just say, listen, there's too many people that are kind of have a worldly mindset, a little lukewarm, and we need to say, I am going to be radical for the Lord Jesus Christ because that's what he's called us to do, to be completely his and to love him with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. Okay. Also, sometimes why we don't call out is apathy, personal disengagement. Sometimes we say, well, who am I to make a difference? I mean, that's what Moses kind of said. Well, who am I? I really can't. That's what Gideon said. Well, who am I? I mean, listen, with God working with you and through you, you can do mighty things. And so we don't need to say, well, who am I? I'm just kind of a little nobody. In fact, the Lord, when he called his disciples, they were pretty much nobodies. They weren't great scribes and famous people and politicians and, you know, people in high places. They were just common folk. 
And that's who Jesus called to be his disciples. Also, sometimes it's just bad theology. And I've heard people say this, and you have too. Maybe you've even said it yourself. Well, God's too busy to, ma- to, to care about this little matter that I have going on. Have you, have you heard somebody ever say that? God has bigger problems to solve than my little, little thing that I'm working on here. No. He's not overwhelmed by anything. He never goes, oh, I have so many things going on, angels. I can't keep up. Well, he, God never does that. He can handle everything. He is God. He is amazing. I, we are to cast all of our cares on him. 1 Peter 5, 7 says that. Casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. Any problem that you have, small or great, take it to the Lord. Nothing is too small. Where did you put your keys? Pray. Ask the Lord. Uh, I mean, I, we pray. I pray many times for small things, knowing that it's not burdensome to the Lord, that the Lord helps me, helps me, and he will help you in, lo- in all kinds of matters, large and small. And then sometimes, and perhaps the most prominent, is pride and self-sufficiency, and crying out is the last resort. And I, I can take care of it. I can do this. And every now and then I found myself trying to do something and thinking, you know what? I haven't prayed to the Lord. Sometimes it's, it's, it's as simple as trying to get a screw started and it won't start. I just can't get it threaded. And sometimes I'm thinking, this is, you know, I'm going to pray. And inevitably, after I pray for a while, it just goes right in. It's like, I should have prayed earlier because I f- fussed with it for like 15 minutes trying to get this bolt or this thing going. Uh, sometimes it's just a small thing that you just need to pray for the Lord's help. And then finally... It says, when Jesus saved Peter, and then they came back in, into the boat. When they came back into the boat, they worshipped him, and the storm ceased. They understand, okay, he walked on water. Jesus did. He caused Peter to walk on water. We saw it. He came into the boat. Everything stopped. The sea became peaceful, and he knew where we were. And they begin to see his deity, the, 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 the attributes of his deity. And so they worshiped him. Worship the Lord when you understand his true identity. It's a natural response. Amen? Amen? Amen. Because I tell you what the devil does. The devil tries to minimize the Lord's true identity. Or he falsifies the Lord's true identity. Or he demeans the Lord's true identity through humor. You know, um, sometimes I, I don't like to sometimes watch late night TV because all the comedians basically is pretty negative and demeaning. All their jokes are demeaning and slandering or negative towards someone usually. You know what I mean? It's always putting someone or something down. And I just say, you know, that is a sarcastic, mean-spirited humor. Everybody laughs. Ha, ha, ha. But it's taking advantage of somebody or a problem and promoting their own agendas, whatever that may be. So I, I usually don't, I don't like to hear that. Jeannie says, well, turn it off. You know, whoever comes on, most of them all are about the same. And so worship the Lord. The, 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 the enemy tries to twist who the Lord is or create a false God in your minds. You know, I, I talked to several guys yesterday, some pretty deep conversations about the Lord. And uh, some of them were uh, probably lost, and, and others were really backslidden. And, you know, they kind of had some real bad misconceptions about who God is. They've been listening to the world. They've been listening to uh, people's opinions and haven't been reading this book. Hello. This book is truth. And so if you get out there and just listen to what the world's saying, you're going to get all kinds of twisted things. And so the truth of God comes through divine revelation and not human reasoning. Not human reasoning. Um, Human reasoning will always get you in trouble. I wrote this. The carnal fleshly mind cannot comprehend the majesty of God. It just can't get it. 1 Corinthians 2.14. 1 Corinthians 2.14 says, says, But the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness or silliness to him. They don't make sense. Nor can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. 
And so it's only as we get the revelation from the Holy Spirit that we worship the Lord. Are unsaved people worshiping the Lord? Are lost people worshiping the Lord? Of course not. They don't even understand who He is. God's never done anything for me. You are created. You live on this planet that He created. You're breathing the air and eating the food that He created. Hello, He's done a lot for you. They don't get it. He died on the cross for you that you might be saved and born again. They don't get it. They're so darkened. Their mind, their natural carnal mind just does not get it. Jesus is the King of kings and the Lord of lords and the creator of heaven and earth and all that is in heaven and earth. In fact, if you look at Colossians 1, 15, 18, you find reason to worship him. It says, he is the image, Jesus is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn. That means preeminent, okay? That word can also be translated preeminent. It's not talking about being born chronologically in time. He is the preeminent one over all creation, for by him all things were created. You can't be a created being and create all things, okay? For by him all things were created that are in heaven and that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things and in him all things consist. He holds all things together. And he is the head of the body, the church. That's why we're here this morning. Who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he may have the preeminence. Amen. Can you worship the Lord this morning? Can you say, thank you, Lord. Give him preeminence this morning because he is the Lord of all. All. He is our everything. If we, when we understand the disciples were starting to get an inkling of who Jesus was, and they worshiped him. And so, watch out. The world will try to shrink Jesus and, 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 and distort Jesus. Don't let that happen. The Holy Spirit and the revelation that he gives to us will show us truly who the Lord is. So, the points that we've covered this morning, and I'm going to conclude basically, but it's jump out of the boat. God makes impossibilities possible. Keep your eyes on Jesus and not on the winds and waves of adversity. When your doubts prevail and you begin to sink, cry out to the Lord, don't hesitate. There's a verse in there you can look. I'm not going to read it this more about Jehoshaphat. Cried out to the Lord immediately. And worship the Lord when you understand his true identity. It's a natural response. Now, Isaiah 25.1 does say this. It's a a short verse. Isaiah 25.1. O Lord, you are my God. I will exalt you. I will praise your name. For you have done wonderful things. Your counsels of old are faithfulness and truth. One verse that we talk about a lot is John 14, 6. And in it, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And I remember that when I was in Greek class, and that's a struggle, my first semester was not good. You know, my, my, my professor never liked my joke. I don't know, it's all Greek to me, professor. <laughs> He's like, man, have I heard that so much? I am so sick of that. You may flunk. Um, but... One of the interesting things when this, this verse is translated, the number one use of that word way, in the Greek it's hadas. You know what? The number one use of that is road. It's basically Jesus saying, you know, Thomas said, Lord, you're going away. We don't know where you're going. We don't know how to get there. And Jesus basically said, yes, you do. I am the, I am the way, which means I am the road. He said, I am the road, the truth, and the life. I am the Hadas, the Aletheia, and the Zoe. I am those things. And you know, I was thinking about the car club yesterday, and some of these guys, you know, some of those guys, they're really in those cars, and they're, 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 they're fixing them all up, and, and they all came here on a road. They all came here on a road. And I was thinking, you know, roads are really important. When Jesus said, I am the road, that's really important, because just think what would happen if we said, you know, today... We're going to take our bus, and we're all going to drive to Canada. We're going up to Canada and uh, on a mission trip, but we're not going to use the roads. We did that a little bit at Brahms. Some of y'all remember. Oh, my goodness. Those of you who went on that Brahms trip. Mm -hmm. Okay. Only you and I know what could have happened. Thank you, God, that it did not. 
uh, driving across pastures. But you know what? Somewhere down the road, driving that bus, not going on the roads, we would hit a fence, a creek, a river, a cliff, a canyon. We would hit something somewhere and saying, this is insurmountable. This is insurmountable. We can't get to Canada unless we have a road. And that's what Jesus was saying. He's saying the sin in your life is insurmountable. You can't get to the Father except by me. I am the road. I am the truth. I will teach you spiritual reality. And I am the life. When you accept me by faith, that spiritual reality transforms you into a new creation. And life comes into you. And you who were once dead in your sin and trespasses have become alive in me. That's what Jesus, that's a powerful verse when you break it down word by word. I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the road. You get to heaven only through me. We used to have a ranch south of Carter, southeast of Carter. And one thing about that ranch was kind of cool. There was one road in and one road out. Am I telling the truth, Jeannie? Yeah. To the south, there was the North Fork of the Red River. You couldn't get across that. To the uh, west was the North Fork of the Red River. It did a big bend. To the east were all these canyons. And to the to the, to, to the right, uh, to the northwest, there was a deep canyon. You had to come into that ranch from the north. It was a gyp road. Dad took that gypsum off those hills and he put it on that road. And it was kind of a serpentine road. And you just kind of came over this hill and wow, you saw the whole river bottom. Uh, uh, thousands of acres down and out in there. We didn't own them all, but there was, it, was, it was incredible. But there was one road in and one road only to get there if you were going to the Van Vactor Ranch. And Jesus was saying there is only one road to heaven. And the disciples started to get it. They started to get it. They started to understand who he was, and that's why he died on the cross for you. And this is leading up to our invitation this morning. You know, we all go through storms, but we need to know that we have a Savior, that we're a born-again child of God, that our Heavenly Father is with us, And that our Savior is sitting at the right hand of God making intercession for us. Whenever you go through a problem, a storm, it should make you feel better that you know that the Lord is praying for you also. And if you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, you can know Him this morning. It's hard, but it's so easy. But you have to give up your old life, your life of sin and defeat and darkness for the light of Christ. And it's the best thing that you can ever do. But sometimes the enemy tries to keep us away or our pride or something tries to keep us away. It's, we're just afraid to let go and trust God. It's a step of faith. It's a step of trust. It's like stepping out of the boat like Peter did. And you will find out that God will sustain you. The Lord will sustain you. So if you've never done that this morning, you can do it right here in our sanctuary. If you're watching on Facebook Live, you can do it there. Just simply kneel or, or where you're sitting, just bow your head and say, Lord, I just ask you to be my Lord and Savior. I repent of my sins. Forgive me. And I put my faith and trust in you. And I will follow you all the days of my life. It's that simple. And if you really mean it, it's not the words that you say. It's mostly your, the meaning of your heart. And you're confessing Lord Jesus with your mouth. All right? If you haven't done that, you can do that this morning. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for the time that we've had here this morning. Lord, it all starts with a prayer of faith in you. And the disciples, they were in that boat. And God, they were storm-tossed. They were weary. They were tired. And you came to them. You came to their rescue. Sometimes, Lord, you let us labor for a while. You let us almost... Well, get to the end of our rope where we feel like, I can't do anymore. I I don't know why this this trial has lasted so long. Help us to be faithful, to keep on rowing, to keep on being obedient to what you've asked us to do. We know that you will come to us, Lord, after we have been perfected, Lord, and learn of your strength and learn perseverance and learn courage. 
And Lord, I pray if there's any person that's watching on Facebook or here this morning that doesn't know that they have a saving relationship with you, they don't know if they were to die this very night that they would go to you to be with you in heaven, I pray that they would make a decision today and confess Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior of their lives. And if they do that, they'll become a new creation in Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Help us, guide us, lead us during this invitation. In Christ's name I pray, amen. Would you prayerfully stand this morning? I'll be down here. Hal will be here. If you need prayer or there's a decision you need to make, you come on this morning, all right? You come on. God's laid something on your heart. You come. can always, if you have questions or you want to talk about where you are with the Lord or starting a relationship with the Lord, you can always come to me or one of these fine Christian folk here in this church. Okay, right after the service, we're turning into Whataburger, all right, <laughs> and uh, Coney Island or whatever, and right down there, uh, we, we're going to have some food for you. Uh, please stay if you can, uh, because otherwise our freezer would just be full of food, and uh, so uh, you can, I think, make a donation. We also are going to have t-shirts for sale. Uh, I don't know if down there now, but we're going to make them available to you. I don't know if anyone's wearing their t-shirt this morning. Yes, there's the ginger. There's our model, okay? Okay, and uh, those are really cool t-shirts. Uh, Levi designed them. Thank you, Levi. And, uh, and uh, he's helping us to, yeah, to uh, kind of uh, address some of the costs of that. And, uh, and then tonight, uh, we're going to go back to our, uh, our uh, Jeffress, Robert Jeffress uh, series on Not All Roads Lead to Heaven. And in number, I think it's number six, uh, but it's really a good series. It's really a good series because uh, it just helps us to know the exclusivity of Jesus Christ. All right, is there something else that we should talk about? All right, uh, Levi, I ask you to do this quite a bit, but would you bless the food? Absolutely. Okay, and by the way, it is good to have Kisten's parents with us this morning. And listen, tomorrow starts birth month, right? Yeah. Kisten, when is, uh, when's the baby? Uh, three, two days, three days, three weeks from tomorrow. Three weeks from tomorrow. So you be praying for her. She's great with child. And... <laughs> I know it's, you know, the tension mounts. I know you guys are excited. We're all excited to see little Sadie Ray. So you be praying for Kisten and Levi and, and all of them. And also pray for his grandpa. His grandpa's been in the hospital. So pray for Don, okay? Lead us in that prayer. Absolutely. Would you? Father God, thank you so much for this time. Thank you for the fellowship of believers that we have here at Two Lakes. Father, I just ask a blessing over the food that we're about to partake. Uh, just uh, sanctify it. And we uh, thank you for the fellowship that we're going to have and for what it does for us and providing our need, Father. We give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen.
out whatever the odd one is on Wednesday. I always try to remember, but I don't know.